cease to exist. Oh, I already know the winner. Dragon or strangle. I am the law. Fine. We don't need leech. We don't need leech. Leech is for the weak. No, 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 no. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. No, I. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, you know why? You know why it's fine? Because I literally only need to hit him once and he's dead, okay? So he gets to go to his little phase and get one kill on me. It's fine. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Oh! <laughs> See? See? It doesn't matter! Because I still just kill him! I still just kill him. We have damage. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hello and welcome exiles to my Val Burning Arrow, which I'm essentially calling a rocket shotgun because Val Burning Arrow, well, let me take off some supports and let me take off Nimbus so it's just easier to see what it, what's going on here. Val Burning Arrow shoots essentially a rocket because it's a projectile that explodes and I call it a rocket shotgun because shotgunning in PUE is when you get multiple hits from one attack. So with my character right now, if I were to have a boss right here and I was going to try to hit him multiple times, I would target right next to him. All of those projectiles that I'm shooting, which is essentially depending on if Dying Sun is up or not, it's either like four or five or six or something. I'm not sure. Point is, all those projectiles are hitting all at once and they hit pretty hard. Now, how good is it? Well, with Val Burning Arrow, you have 400% effectiveness of added damage. That's what you call hitting like a truck. Because if I go and I do what I have right now with just five projectiles or something with Dying Sun, because I have two from Dead Eye, two from Dying Sun, I might have like one from my bow because I have an okay bow. Uh, that, that that is a big amount of shotgun because say you have five six hits that's about 2000 to 2400 percent effectiveness of added damage that's hitting pretty freaking hard it gets a little bit better once you add in something like a nimbus because you add in a nimbus now i'm not hitting for 24 or 2000 percent or 2400 percent damage i'm hitting for uh, essentially what would be oh i don't have my did I take my skill out? Oh, I took my I took my skill out. Anyways, uh, so essentially, instead of hitting for two thousand percent or twenty four hundred percent, I'm now hitting for twice that because the projectiles not only do they hit right here, but then they return to my character. So if I'm standing on top of the enemy, well, I'd be getting both the hits that are the ones I just just to showcase them returning. But essentially, when you when you pack it all in that tight little space, those are all hitting twice on the same enemy. Now. I'm kind of memeing a little bit here because while playing this character, I've been using Aero Nova just because I think it looks fun. It's not the optimal play, and I'll explain why. Aero Nova is a good source of additional projectiles, and it doesn't have quite as much of a damage nerf as great, Greater Multiple Projectiles or, G, or Greater Volley does, but I'm essentially losing half my damage because instead of having all the projectiles tightly knit on one location right here, I'm having the projectiles go all the way out here and then hit here. So. Nimbus, the way I'm using it, is not correct. The correct way is greater, greater multiple, and then shotgunning it all at point blank range. That being said, I'd have to change out a far shot. I'd have to grab point blank, yada, yada, yada. I'm just saying this to let you know if you wanted to play this character, and I will showcase, probably when I do the Minotaur, I'll showcase without Nimbus, just to give you an idea of what the damage looks like without Nimbus. The damage is totally fine. Uh, but I played with Nimbus and Aaron over because I thought it looked fun, and that's what I was enjoying, so that's what I did. Anyways... Moral of the story is, uh, that's the kind of the idea, is we're hitting a huge shotgunning effect of Val Burning Arrow. Now, how do we sustain Val Burning Arrow? How do we have so many so many chances to use Val Burning Arrow? How can I reliably have this extra damage when I'm doing a boss fight? Yada, yada, yada. Or while I'm mapping. Well, quite frankly, what we're doing is, you have a lot of flash generation. Combine that with Soul Ripper, you can begin to have a lot of essentially procs for Val Burning Arrow. Because so Val Burning Arrow has a 15 charge cost, 15 Val Souls cost, 
and you can get up to 45 souls. So that gives you three Valburnian charges, right? So when I press this, I have two flasks with 56 and 60 charges. Optimally, you want to spend exactly 45 uh, flash charges right now. These aren't perfectly rolled flasks. I didn't get an optimal flask. The market's pretty dead. Most people are logged off that would have rolls that are the right range. But ideally, I'd want this character to have, I think, about 50, consume 50 charge um, soul rippers probably because I have 5% reduced charges used from this node here. No, 10%. So optimally, I would need a flask that has a 50 charge consumption. So that way I don't have to spend up to or i don't have to sustain up to 56 and i can just use it like that i think but this works fine because essentially when you when you do this yeah we're spending a little extra charges it's not best for sustain but it's it's good enough it doesn't have to be perfect to work so for flash generation i have the chest piece with two flasks per three seconds i have the mastery with one flask per three seconds i'm stealing the pathfinder jewels for three charges per three seconds I'm getting flash charge gain on this cluster and flash charge flash charge gain on this belt. And on top of all of that, I also have Balbala with one empty flash slot. The idea essentially is stack a whole bunch of flash sustain, which essentially equates to um Val Soul generation, and then stack multiple soul ripper flasks. Because if you have two soul ripper flasks, that's going to be twice as much generation for Val Souls as having one soul ripper flask. Because when I use this one, and then I say I use these souls. I have a two second uh, soul game prevention timer. Once that is up, then I can use this other flask and then I can go again. But hopefully by the time this solar is, this thing's used up again, I can then proc the next flask and keep rotating between the two. Now, I've thought about this a little bit further and I actually believe optimally Balbala isn't actually the play. I probably should just do a third soul ripper because that represents 50% more flash charge generation, which is a little bit better than traders getting me and i could ideally go for maybe the enchant that says charge recovery when not in use because then i could rotate between the three and it would kind of work that way i think but i'm not 100 sure i didn't really play around it with with it a lot but the idea is basically it's like a bunch of flash charge generation with soul ripper and that's how we get our continuous use of valburning arrow this skill works great for this because it doesn't have a very long soul gain prevention time but other skills that have good or have bad soul game prevention times, it wouldn't work as ideally for, if that makes any sense. But hopefully that explains the mechanics of how we're building our Val Burning Arrow. What else we have in the character? It's basically stock standard, just a deck stacker with a deck stack base. I have a deck stack relic. I've never played a deck stacker, or at least I don't remember the last time I played a deck stacker. It had to be years ago. And so I decided, you know what? I'll make a deck stacker. Ideally, I think if you're going to optimally make this character around Valburnian Arrow. I don't think the play is necessarily to do deck stacker. I'm not convinced because our tree is kind of potato and the only defenses we have right now we were able to fit into the character was a bunch of evasion plus uh, spell surprise. And I think outside of deck stacker, like if you would try Ellie um, bow with a Trinity support, stuff like that, you probably can get better damage, but that requires a good bow. But that still would be more affordable to then doing a deck stack relic because in the future, deck stack relic isn't gonna exist yada 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 i digress point is that's the idea behind the character uh the cool thing is val burning arrow i don't want to go too much over deck stacking deck stacking is just you get a nice val Bal jewel with a bunch of decks on it you get a, a lot of decent decks nodes you get some clusters and you're, you're pretty much good to go that's that's mostly the idea behind deck stacking now let's go ahead and let's do a showcase for minotaur to showcase you what it looks like if we were to use per se a i'm gonna do volley ideally i think gmp is what you want to do but my character's spec for far shot and not spec for point blank so i want to try to hit the enemy from farther away oh i need to not do nimbus as well i wanted to do no nimbus just to showcase what the damage looks like without it but i want to if i want to hit an enemy a far away and do shotgun i have to do volley if i want to get good shotgunning and optimal damage i think it's greater multiple projectile and sitting right next to the enemy and then doing that right Anyways, I'll showcase what it looks like while doing a Minotaur map. One of my captors felt no emotion. Upside with this character is we shotgun really hard and Valburner Arrow looks like works like Caustic Arrow where it explodes every time it pierces and it comes naturally with three pierce and it works great. The downside is whenever you don't have Valburning Arrow, regular Burning Arrow is kind of flaccid. It doesn't have any AoE, so Unless we invest into some nice, nice pierce and maybe chain and maybe fork, yada, yada, yada. It's just not going to feel super crazy great. So that's kind of like the, uh, 
the issue-ish there is what I would say. Anyways, well, I'll show you what it looks like while we do map. I'm not gonna do delirium mirror because I freaking I hate grayscale. Um, but you can see whenever we pierce through enemies, the the Valburn arrow explodes on every single enemy. So you actually get really good shotgunning when you when you actually shoot through like a pack of monsters because of that. Outside of that, um, I'm surprised that guy even lived that long. Outside of that, I still think there's a decent amount of times where I feel like enemies are left alive because of, I don't know, it just doesn't always seem to hit everything or doesn't hit, hit everything well, I'd say. I'm not too sure, but regardless, I think it's still a pretty fun skill to use Valborneer just because of that really nice, clean, explodey effect to it. Um... And I think in the future, I do probably want to make this maybe next league because now I have a better idea of what I want to do that I think would be more optimal. Instead of doing like Aeronova deck stack, I think I would change some things, maybe even change my ascendancy. I have some ideas I want to try out differently than this. But this at least showcases the idea of investing into Soul Ripper Flash just to have high sustain on a really dangerous, really deadly Val Burning, Val Burning Arrow skill because it hits so dang hard. Um, cause of, just because of its effectiveness of added damage and the amount of shotguns you're getting out of it. It's just really, really nice for that. As for mapping or as for clear, when you run out of those Valborning Souls, you have that two second window where you're down and you don't have your like flask up or whatever, or you're not pressing it, you forget about it, yada, 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 whatever it hits or whatever it is. That's the only awkwardness of this character. And I think that probably could be optimized for, I think there's a potential where you make this character with the Triumvirate Authority Ring and you have a Valburning Arrow set up there. And then you have a six link like clear skill that actually feels good to play. And all of a sudden you have the good clear and the Giga Shotgun, I think is maybe an idea, but you'd have to set up for that. So Minotaur, I'll showcase, I'll curse him here and then I'll, so, like we kill them in two shots. Like that's no Nimbus, that's just a greater volley. I think that showcases the damages is there even without something like Nimbus. I also want to state that um, besides Nimbus, the other good item I have, basically there's essentially oh, three is coming to my mind, but right now I know Nimbus is expensive and my chest piece is expensive. The bow is decent, but this you could just awaken orb like a spine bow and you wouldn't be too far off this if you're doing deck stack. But ultimately, I think a better play is probably a try Ellie bow. Uh, and not doing deck stack at all. I'm trying to think what other expensive item I have is. This amulet, it it's, looks really cool because it has percent attributes, but ultimately, just a percent dex amulet is going to do just as much damage as this amulet's going to do, and if not, you can maybe craft a better one if you just do a percent dex amulet. And those amulets aren't super expensive. Um, I'm not really remembering, but point is, this chest piece, very expensive because it has percent uh, attack speed per dex, very nice quality of life thing ultimately though we have way more attack speed than we do the ability to um proc our val burning arrow because our val burning arrow is not limited by attack speed it's limited by val soul gain prevention and val soul generation so ultimately this chest would normally be a really good damage chest for a deck stacker but because i'm basically building around val burning arrow it's not really that optimal i did it originally because i wasn't sure if i was going to do val burning arrow or not and then i didn't really want to recraft a different chest it's nice and all, but this isn't this isn't something required. You could have a, a chest piece with more decks on it, and you could hit harder, and and you'd still be rolling just fine because the attack speed, it, it's pretty much a quality of life thing. I think it's optimal if you want to do the in the future if you're doing a deck stack and you want like faster attack speed while mapping or whatever. But I don't think it's like required to make the character work. I should say, if that makes any sense. Anyways, point is, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how good you can shotgun with val burning arrow and how you can build into it with soul ripper flash with a bit of flash charge generation and that's the idea behind the character you could probably run this as a pathfinder instead of a dead eye if you wanted to change some things around i think maybe in the future i might try a pathfinder setup myself i'm not too sure haven't really decided point is i enjoyed making this character and man does it shotgun really really hard so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and always as always thanks for watching take care exiles